good. Good evening, everyone. I'd just like to thank everyone for coming to my presentation tonight. Uh, I'd like to give a big thank you to my mentor, Mrs. Hefner. Um, she's been a huge help this whole semester. I just want to um, let everyone know that she um, has been a really big, important person uh, this semester in ISM, and I really am thankful for her for being here. Um, so my quote for this year in ISM was, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Um, and I really liked this quote and chose it to just like encompass my entire ISM journey this year because um, I really hope to do something in the future and with my life, with my career, that will benefit other people um, in the service of others that just um, like helps others and is selfless. Um, so I've been really trying to strive towards that this year and everything that I do and keeping that in focus for the future. Um, a little bit about me. I'm involved in Young Life and CrossFit. I play the ukulele. I love animals, especially dogs, and I enjoy being outside. Um, so this year in ISM, I studied chemical engineering, uh, which is improving the efficiency or safety of chemical processes and manufacture. So uh, most chemical processes or manufacturing processes use chemical engineers. Um, they're the ones who uh, create a process, and, or they take a process that a chemist would create um, and put it on the large scale, so in a production um, type setting. So people uh, make, and make sure that the workers are safe and make sure that all the standards of state and local um, and federal guidelines are all being followed and all requirements being met in terms of manufacturing and safety um, and like workplace hazards and things like that. Um, and so why I like chemical engineering and why I've chosen to pursue that in the future um, is because it just has a huge variety of applications. Um, it's a career field that can be applied to a lot of different industries, um, things like food, um, and all kinds of manufacturing, defense, um, cosmetics, all sorts of processing industries use chemical engineers. Um, and engineers are also typically the leaders of research teams, which is something that I really, really like. I like leadership positions, um, and I really hope that I can be a leader for a team in the future. Um, so that was really appealing to me. Um, so. Uh, why I took ISM was because I knew I was interested in chemistry. Um, by sophomore year, we'd taken chemistry, everyone had taken chemistry, and I was kind of the only one who liked it. Um, I really liked it, actually. And so I kind of thought that maybe that would be something that I would want to do in the future, but I wasn't really sure. I didn't even know if you could just major in chemistry. So I did a little bit of research on junior year, um, and I found out that you could major in chemistry, and there's also chemical engineering. Um, but I wasn't really sure what the difference between the two of them were. So I decided I'd do ISM and try to figure out uh, which of those two things I liked and if I even liked either of those two things. Um, so I decided to do chemical engineering this year and I really, really liked it. Uh, and I'm glad that I made that my priority this year. Um, and so uh, when we started this year, we started by doing research assessments to just get more familiar with our field and what we were going to be studying this year. So the first thing we did was a career outlook assessment um, just to kind of see where our field was and where it would be in the future and by the time we got out of college. So I learned that chemical engineering is mainly a male-dominated field, which wasn't really surprising considering most engineering fields are typically male-dominated, but that doesn't deter me. I'm excited to go um, and be a female in the field where it's kind of the minority. Um, I also learned that it's becoming a bit more biology-dependent, which was good to know, so um, hopefully be taking a couple more biology classes in college just to prepare for that. Um, and also that experience is really crucial in this field, so internships and co-ops and jobs and all that kind of stuff um, is really, really important in order to be successful because you can only learn so much in the classroom, but a lot of engineering is problem solving um, and using like real world tools to solve things, so that uh, experience is really, really important. Um, so the first research assessment that I did um, was about why material science should be included in high school chemistry curriculums, um, which is really interesting to me because I really like material science and I'm also currently taking AP Chemistry in high school, so that was a Kind of a more personal matter, um, it was interesting to hear what professionals and what people um, in the academic field were thinking about that, um, because obviously I want to be the most prepared I can be for college by taking courses in high school, so um, you know, professors and people that are very high up in the field saying that material science is important and should be studied, um, it's interesting to me because I definitely want to be prepared for college, I want to know everything that I should know. Um, my second research assessment talked about how um, a protein extracted from mushrooms called hydrophobins could replace sugars and fats in processed foods, um, which is really interesting. So they're talking about how like chips and burgers and french fries and all those kind of things and candies, um, the hydrophobins, the mushroom proteins, could uh, be used to replace the sugars in those foods. Um, and they're saying it kind of has you know very comparable texture and taste uh, without the 
negative health side effects of eating all the sugar and food, uh, sugars and fats and processed foods. So that was really interesting as well, just a really, um, you know, really good application of chemical engineering and how it can be used to help people. Um, that's a long way, from, long way away from being available to the public, but um, it's cool to you know that stuff like that is kind of in the works um, and exciting to think about what's coming in the future. Uh, my third research assessment was kind of around the time that we were doing our original work. Uh, my original work was about drone planes and drone strikes, which I'll get into later. But this research assessment was just about one of the favorite articles that I found while doing that. So it talked all about um, how drone planes are becoming a more um, permanent fixture in modern warfare and all about the pros and cons um, and how their use has increased under the Obama, Obama administration. Um, so that was all really interesting and very pertinent to what I was doing at the time. Uh, my next research assessment was a primary learning one. Um, so I wrote about what I learned about on a mentor visit. Um, so I learned about how the circuit cards were assembled in my mentor's lab. Um, I learned about how it goes from the very beginning and to how it goes through um, a flux and solder wave machine and all the parts get attached to it. Um, and it goes through tons and tons of tests uh, by machines and by humans to make sure that all the parts are in the right places and make sure everything's um, functioning the way it's supposed to be. Um, and then it goes through a cleaning line, which I learned all about that too. So that was interesting to learn about and that was kind of towards the beginning of my mentorship. So it was good to start getting a grasp on what it is my mentor did. Um, my fifth research assessment was about military requirements for circuit boards um, because it's a lot different than what's required of commercial circuit boards um, just because you know military circuit boards are putting people's lives on the line so it's really crucial that they work the way that they're supposed to. Um, so there's a lot more uh, strict specifications and regulations for those that people handle uh, more current in the board um, especially if something were to happen that was unexpected the boards need to be able to handle um, like all kinds of different situations and not malfunction. Um, and it's also really important to pay attention to the heat signature on commercial boards for military um, because if they're in a system that could be used or it could be seen with like an infrared camera by the enemy um, such as like a drone plane or any sort of you know tank or um, airborne system um, it's really important that it's not giving off enough heat to be able to be detectable by um, enemy systems which obviously is not a concern when you're talking about uh, commercial boards. So that was really interesting to hear about just how much more difficult it was in the defense field to manufacture like the same thing um, in the commercial field. Um, my next research assessment was also primary learning. I learned about the cleaning chemistry and flux involved in manufacturing circuit boards, which ended up being um, my final product. I did a lot with that, so I'll kind of explain that later, but I really liked that um, and found it really interesting. And I decided that I was gonna go deeper into that. My next assessment was another primary learning one. Um, I went to the failure analysis lab at Raytheon um, and they look at parts that fail and decide why they fail um, and try to fix that. And then my last assessment was also primary learning. Um, I just kind of learned a lot that day. I learned about reworking processes, which is where if a part falls off a circuit board or it's been recalled, um, someone can just go in and like fix the board by hand and not have to like recreate the whole board or destroy the whole thing. You can just go in and um, like fix one part, which is really impressive. Um, because the boards have like hundreds of parts on them, some are bigger, some are small. Um, so it was really interesting to see how someone can do that and I got to look through the, like, look through the microscope and see what it was like to be able to do that. So that was a really, really cool experience. Um, I also saw good and bad solder joints through the microscope so I could get uh, a view of what they're looking for, what they're not looking for, and what looks bad. Um, and I also learned more about the inline cleaning process which the boards go through after they're completed, which I'll talk more about in my final product. Um, so as well as research, we also did interviews in order to learn more about our industry that we were interested in. So my first interview was with Kristen Barrett, and she's a mechanical and petroleum engineer at Denbury. And she's in charge of opening new offshore facilities um, from conception to completion. So it was really interesting to talk to her um, because I'm also interested in the petroleum field. So it was interesting to hear from a woman's perspective in the petroleum field, which is even uh, considered male dominant even for an engineering field, which is saying a lot. So it was good to hear from her point of view and hear what she had to say. Um, my next interview was with Kayla Teague, she's an environmental chemist at AECOM um, and she would take data from soil and water and air samples from different uh, like plots of land that her company was working with, uh, look at the levels of chemicals in that sample to see if they coincided with state regulations and laws um, and if they didn't she started to devise a plan with her team um, in order to fix that which is super interesting but it was kind of a bit slow for me because in order to you know, fix the contaminated soil or air or water, it takes years. The project she's working on um, was a 10-year project and they're kind of at the beginning of it. So I think that uh, that 
length of project to be a bit much for me. So I um, decided that environmental chemistry wasn't quite the exact field for me. Um, my next interview is with Dr. Ronald Smaldone. He's a chemistry pre professor at UT Dallas. Um, and he led a team of grad students that research organic chemicals um, and man-made chemicals in their lab, which is really interesting. And I got to sit in on one of their meetings and hear the students present the information that they learned that week um, and listen to Dr. Smaldone like, critique them and ask them questions. So that was really, really interesting because um, I hope to go to grad school. So it's kind of cool to get a glimpse into what my future might be if I decide to pursue that. My next interview is with Jarrett Palinez. He's a toxicologist at US Health Group. Um, and so his lab, he ran the lab that analyzed urine samples um, in order to make sure that the body was metabolizing the drugs that patients were being given. So they look for um, like different proteins and things in the urine to make sure that the body's breaking down the medicine the right way and to make sure the patient is taking the right dosage of medicine and not um, overdosing or not taking too little of it. Um, and they use a process called chromatography where they run the sample through um, like a machine and it has uh, like a rod of proteins that has like different proteins on it. And so the proteins will like grab onto like different parts of different like chemicals in the urine and it like spreads it out. So you can see like each individual like chemical or protein that's present in the, in the urine and then it'll send it to like a data system. So you can look at it in a computer and like look at like a graph and see the spikes and see what's present in the urine to make sure that everything is how it should be. So that was very interesting. Um, and then my next interview is with Brandon Nelson, he's a food scientist at Daisy Brand Sour Cream. Uh, he manages a lab that tries to improve the shelf life of the sour cream and improve the production. Um, and they also use chromatography at their lab, which was interesting to see. Um, they put the sour cream through there and also, you know, to see what proteins and stuff are present, how much are present. Um, but it was really cool to see, like, the same technology being used in a completely different way. You know, from toxicology to food is a huge difference, but still being able to use the technology was super cool. Um, and it was fun to be able to go in there and be like, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Um, so that was awesome. And then my next interview was with Kathy Payne. She's a chemical engineer at Authentics, which is a company that puts chemical markers into oil to prevent counterfeit among oil companies. So um, let's say like Shell will have a particular chemical marker in their oil, and they send out people to go get like samples from different Shell stations or like across the country. Um, and then they'll use chromatography for that as well. Um, and run the oil samples through there to make sure that Shell is using their oil make sure that their chemical marker is in every single sample of oil to prevent the counterfeit. Um, so it was interesting, another way that chromatography was being used, another um, cool like real world example of things that you would be learning in the classroom being applied to real life and being applied in all different ways. Um, so I really enjoyed that. My next interview was with Jim Foreman. He's a materials scientist at Raytheon. Um, he was in charge of like developing new materials mostly. He worked with organic materials and like electromagnetic materials. Um, and that was my first time at Raytheon, so I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and he showed me all the different types of materials they use for like the nose cones of missiles, because I just thought it was like a metal like covering on the missile, but um, that would like burn up in the atmosphere, I'd, like the speeds and like, like wind resistance, I guess. Um, so it has to be an organic material that's like just as strong as metal, but won't burn up like that. And so that's what they are working on, working on improving that. So that was really interesting, and um, that was my first glimpse at the defense field, and I really, really liked it. Um, my next interview was with Mary Heifner. She's a senior manager of operations at Raytheon, and she oversees a lab that makes circuit cards for military systems. Um, so that was my second time at Raytheon. I really, really enjoyed my visit again. Um, it was super cool to just be in such like a high security place and um, like see all the things that uh, you know go to our military and go to our soldiers overseas. Um, it was very cool. And then my next interview is with Christy Gomez. She's a biochemist at Mary Kay, um, and her team tests uh, skincare products to make sure that it won't be harmful to the skin or the eyes, the lungs. So they run all sorts of tests um, to make sure that new products won't be harmful. So I chose Mary Hefner as my mentor because I was just mostly interested in her job, and I felt like um, you know we had similar personalities, and I felt like that we would you know get along and have a really good, good productive mentorship. Um, her job was just super interesting to me and I really wanted to learn more about it because she combines um, business with chemical engineering, which is um, something that I definitely like because I like business a lot as well. So it was cool to see that those two things can be combined and I wanted to learn more about it. Um, so some of the highlights for my mentorship, um, the first mentor visit that I had, I sat, on, sat in on a meeting with her, um, which was super cool. It was like kind of my like real first glimpse into like an everyday life of the chemical engineering. I got into sit down and interview with them, but it was kind of an overview, but it was cool to have like a specific glimpse into what I might be doing in the future. 
Um, and Mrs. Heathner also arranged me to shadow other chemical engineers within the company and you know, closely related to her lab, which was really cool for me because she knew that I was interested in the defense field and she wanted to give me um, a good view of all the different things that a chemical engineer can do in the field. So I got to shadow like a lab facilitator that oversees all the processes. I got to learn about the manufacture of the circuit cards. I got to learn about the cleaning chemistry used to clean the circuit boards once they're finished. I got to learn about um, the rework that goes on with the circuit boards if a part fails and needs to be replaced. Um, and I got to go to the failure analysis lab uh, where they look at unknown materials and try to identify what kind of material might be on the board that's not supposed to be there or try to figure out why a part failed. Um, so that was super interesting as well. So with my original work, I decided to research drone planes and their use in targeted killings uh, because my mentor's lab makes circuit cards for all sorts of military systems, including drone planes. Um, and so I also looked at the legality of it and how it affects both Americans and foreign citizens. Oh, I forgot this one didn't work. 